Hi there. This is The Inevitable. This is Motor Trend's new podcast where we talk about EVs, cars without steering wheels, our hydrogen future, and everything else that's coming down the road. In other words, where are we going and how are we going to get there? We have an incredible show for you today with a Mr. Reggie Watts, really good guest. Uh, before then, I am joined by Mr. Motor Trend himself, the lowest of the low, Ed Lowe. How are you doing, Ed? I'm fine. Thank you for Having me on my own podcast, uh, Johnny. It's great to be here. Uh, it is good to be. It here. is good to be here. And welcome yeah. everybody to the inevitable. This is, as Johnny mentioned, on the future of mobility. Johnny would prefer I say the future of the car. I was. We should have just called it the future of the car. The it, inevitable is a little cornball, but you know that's just me. It's a great name <laughs> because uh, this is the inevitable podcast from Motor Trend. Uh, EVs, electrification. It's all inevitable, and that's. What we're talking about. And I think, actually, this is a really good year for us to be starting this podcast, though, because our big awards, our of the year awards, this is really what Motor Trend is known for. If you watch the Super Bowl, you know we give out truck of the year, car of the year. And guess what? Truck of the year and car of the year this year are EVs. For the first time in our history, Motor Trend's been giving out uh, car of the year since 1949. Uh, Both car and truck of the year are EVs. And a, really, SUV of the year is also an EV. Right. The Genesis, so the Genesis uh, GV70 won our SUV of the year as a gasoline powered car. And then they didn't tell us, and like, they announced yeah. they have an electric version. Months later at yeah. the Guangzhou but, China <laughs> Auto Show, they announced an EV version of that vehicle. It could have been the Trifecta, uh, but no, instead, it is really car and truck of the year. Car of the year, the Lucid Air, and truck of the year, the Rivian R1T. Yeah. So, tr- uh, you know, watershed year from Motor Trend in terms of the awards we give, but also uh, really just in terms of interest. Um, yeah. You know, as you know, Johnny's been around Motor Trend since 2010, 2000, July 2010. 2010, which is three years, two years actually. We gave out our first car of the year to an electric car company in the fall of 2012. Mm-hmm. That was Tesla Model S. Mm-hmm. And you and I were both in the room? In the room, in New York City, with Elon. Oh, I meant when we voted, but yeah, we were yes, also there sorry. with Elon. Yeah, We yeah. were both on the Hanging panel. With Elon. Yes, we were both on the panel of the, one of the 11 judges that voted Tesla Model S Car of the Year. We've subsequently given uh, the award to Another electric vehicle manufacturer, General Motors. Yeah, for the Chevy Volt. Chevy Volt. Uh, uh, Bolt. Chevy. Sorry, they got to work on that name. Chevy Bolt, not the Volt. We also gave it to the Volt. <laughs> yes, we gave it to Chevy Volt yeah. and Bolt. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yes, this is the third electric car, uh, Lucid Air, our car of the year, electrified. Um, and then, again, Rivian, big news. But what I was saying is we've seen a tremendous amount of interest in electric vehicles. Really, you know, up until – Honestly, 18 months or so ago, the only stories that would really get a lot of traffic on our website at motortrend.com would be Tesla stories, specifically yeah. Tesla product launches. We've been lucky enough to land a bunch of exclusives. We've yep. got exclusive Cyber range tests, Cybertruck, Model 3, yep. when we did the long range uh, Model S. And every one of those, huge traffic numbers. Every other EV, like not a lot of interest. Yep. For some reason, this year has been a watershed year. Uh, we're going to finish out – we finished out, sorry, I should say, 2020 with seven of our top 20 stories, uh, electric vehicles. Wow. So really? including uh, Lucid was yep. one of them. We did a Lucid – I think your exclusive drive of the Lucid Air. That was 21, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and – and the the Rivian, Rivian. I mean, the, the Rivian. The, we drove, the we drove 7, Trail. 700 miles off-road electrically, which, yep. is, which is super cool. And the other manufacturer, Ford F-150 Lightning. Yeah, that's The story huge. that we had on that massive story. Of course, that's the number one selling – F-150 is number one selling vehicle in America. So that makes a lot of sense. A lot of interest there. Anyways, this, that's, what, that's, what, that's why we're here. We're yeah. talking about the inevitable. Inevitable isn't only about electric vehicles, but that's really our starting point. Because mm-hmm. that's what we have in front of us now, and like, look, we've been we've been told that you know cars are all going to be electric for a while now. Well, it, it's it's looking that way, and there's a number of reasons why. We've also been told that cars are going to drive themselves, and that seems to be much much more difficult yes. uh, than electrifying a vehicle. But I was reading something interesting last night. Um, 
in 2010, when I started Motor Trend, the uh, cost per kilowatt hour of battery was 1200 bucks. In 2021, $132. And they're predicting by 2024, we'll get to the magical $100 per kilowatt hour. When that happens, it's just cheaper, just every all in. It's cheaper to build an electric Corolla than it is to make a gasoline powered Corolla. Once you hit that hundred dollars per kilowatt hour, and then Farley at Ford was saying they think by two thousand thirty it gets down to eighty dollars per kilowatt hour, which means that cars will be even cheaper to build in the future than they are now, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. But that this is this watershed moment, the, the inevitable to put it in uh, the terminology of the show. Um, you know, because it just at the end of the day, remember, the you know, car companies, they want to print cash, right? They want right. to make money. And uh, when it's more profitable to build an EV than it is to build a gas car, forget about the political pressures, the green pressure, any kind of other consideration. It's just like just straight capitalism dollars and cents. You right. want to have electric vehicles because right. it, it's cheaper. Right. And, and but more you, profitable. Yes. And you, but you touch on a great point, which is uh, this isn't. We we did Motor Trend did some research. We 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 tend to do these studies or surveys every now and then, and we actually polled our um, our our potential car consumers. We did a we worked with a third party independent research firm, asking car shoppers what are they interested in. The subset of the questions was on EVs, mm. and the one of the key drivers. I think fifty eight percent of the people we polled said that climate change, environmental reasons were fueling their decisions to examine an electric vehicle. All that's fine and good, but to what you just said, it actually doesn't matter because if you don't believe in climate change, if you don't believe it's real, it is real. But if you don't believe, yeah, it's it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter because, because companies have already taken a position and governments are taking a oh, position yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. So again, all this is more fuel to why this whole we feel like this whole thing, this whole shift that we're going through right now is inevitable, um, and why we're also really looking forward to talking uh, to our guest, Reggie Watts. Who yeah. I did a bunch of research on, yeah, and uh, turns out he is, I think, a massive, massive car guy hiding yeah. in plain sight on James Corden's yeah. show. Yeah, as the band leader, as the but, band he's, leader. but he's also not only a car guy; he's like a futurist. Yes, yeah, he's an incredible guy. Can't wait to talk to him. But um, he's also like kind of like where I'm finding myself these days. I don't know if you find yourself this way based on the cars you own, but like I got one foot in both worlds. Like yeah. I can, I, I I recently did a thing at the Peterson Museum for this uh, for Omaze where I was you know talking about the future of EVs. But I'm looking at the cars I own. I don't own an EV. I like my perform. I have an old like you. I have an old you know gas guzzling in a sense Porsche. Um, and it's uh, like you know, so I'm, I mean, I want to get his take on like what it's like to like right. love cars, but also see the future. Yes. And, and do you find? Let me ask you that though. Ed, do you find yourself struggling? Like you have, just so everyone out there knows, you have a, a 1987 uh, Land Cruiser yep. diesel from yep. Canada, yep. and you have a 87 Porsche 930 uh, turbo. Um, like, but you're also this big EV advocate. Like, how do you how do you reconcile this within yourself? Well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, look, the wife and I decided that the next car will be an EV. I've told her, uh, and it's going to be her car. We're going to have to get rid of. She has an Audi. Um, we all our cars are white. Um, oh, they're all I mean, they're all they're all turbocharged. <laughs> uh, hers is a, no, no an A three. Yeah, this is funny. I think the only thing we're missing is an all wheel drive white uh, car because we have a. Oh no, no, sorry. The Land Cruiser four wheel drive. Yeah. Turbo diesel. The Porsche is obviously rear drive turbo. And her Audi is front drive turbo, so we're missing a mid engine. I think right. that's, that's what I ended up with. Um, but yeah, we're we got a kid now. We need a, probably a larger SUV. Um, the honestly, the the Land Cruiser and the Porsche are the personal cars that don't get driven a whole ton. The the Land Cruiser is for surfing. The Porsche is when I have time for it, and then I have a yeah, work and, I have a work and, car. And also, as I was gonna say, they're both appreciating assets at this point. Yes. In time. So yeah. Yes. yeah that's, so I don't I don't want the kid. That's to, a college fund. Exactly. Exactly. One hundred percent. College will either be free. Or, oh, or $2 million, <laughs> yeah. depending on... We were, I don't know what they told you when Evan was... That's Ed's son. I probably shouldn't say his name. But and when he was born, when my son Richard was born, they told us uh, it'll be $700,000 for a four-year school. Yes. That's I'm, what our financial I'm, planner told us. I'm banking that uh, President... Uh, oh, this is going to get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> Sasha Obama will make uh, college free at that point. So when my kid goes to school... I mean, you know, or they'll become plumbers. It was a smart thing to do. Right. But, yeah, but to your point, to your yeah. point, yes. Uh, EVs are on definitely on our... On our on the personal um, agenda because we just have to. It, 
we live in an area that's charging's not an issue. It makes a lot of sense, uh, all that. And you're a homeowner. And so I'm a homeowner, you, yes. you could charge at your house because people that are, live in apartments, uh, slightly that's difficult. tricky. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get to all that on the show because I'm finding myself, my little, I have a little Ford Fiesta ST that blew up the other day. Just like, I think the engine's toast and they quoted me like, you know, uh, 60% of the value of the car to fix it. So that's probably right. not going to happen. And my wife is like, let's get an EV. And and for me, though, like the the one that, you know, what I want is is like I want an electric G-Wagon at a slightly lower price. So maybe like when Rivian does make a smaller two-row type SUV, I want that. But I'm also like, should I buy one last gas car? Should I buy Should I buy the Jeep 392? And um, Or the Cadillac CT... You, you are, you know, you, the CT5 V Blackwing, yeah. I, I, I don't know if I can quite afford that, but like, you know, because I, I, I was. 392? I mean, come was on. Was it 75? I could kind of swing it, but also that's that's going to hold its value, right? So you spend, yeah. you're spending 75,000, but when you go to sell it, that's, you know, you're getting at least that back. It's funny because the older I get, the more uh, buying like uh, a Viper. Mm. Or, <laughs> yes, or a pre a first pre, first gen Viper. Yeah, uh, actually, I, any of them, any, like a, like an ACR. Oh, oh or, fifth gen. Yeah, yeah. Or um, a, a Corvette, a pre C8 Corvette, like just something big with a huge V8 yeah. uh, manual, just just to have around when everything becomes uh, quiet and smooth and electrified. Right. No, and that's a great question. Like, do you want both? And I. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to buy. We we have a list of ten. My wife crossed about four of them off, so I'm not getting a GT3. For those of you sitting at home wondering, um, she said no to that, but she did not cross the Jeep off the list, so we might do that. But we also have some EVs on there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a really strange point in time right now because not only are EVs getting better, but like gasoline powered cars are still getting better. Oh yeah, you know that that Jeep 392, in my opinion, is the best SUV. I've ever driven, unless you think of the Rivian truck as an SUV, even though it's a pickup truck. We know that the eventual R1S will be the same thing. Like, boy, that kind of puts everything on the trailer, you know? Like, right. and it's, uh, well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about why the uh, the Rivian and the Lucid took home our, our, our top prizes. Uh, well, you're, what well, you can tee up, um, the Air, the Lucid Air. You spent a ton of time with them. Yeah. I had a really interesting experience. So I got I was the first uh to, to my knowledge the first non lucid employee to drive it. Um and so I spent a Dan Angeles crest with Peter Rawlinson who's the CEO and the CTO, the chief technical officer and uh you former know, he, chief engineer of Tesla Model S, former chief back engineer when it won. of of Lotus. Lotus. Yes. And I didn't really realize that at the time, but he showed up wearing, like, you know, racing booties. He was wearing, like, fireproof shoes. And I was kind of like, all right, dude, that's a little much. And then, you know, we drove up Angeles Crest, a road that I live right near it. I drive it at least once a week. We were flying. We were flying. And, and he, was fall- he was keeping up with me. He'd never, he'd never driven the road before. So the dude can drive. And he was telling me his dream for the Lucid Air was, and pardon the pun, but he wanted uh, an S-Class in terms of luxury, mm-hmm. and he wanted a Lotus in terms of handling, and he wanted, like, the most efficient, uh, high-performance EV possible. Don't think he quite got there in terms of Lotus-like handling, but, like, man, if, if I told you you're driving a GTR, you'd be like, this is like the new Nissan GTR. It's sure. awesome. Yeah, because it's hard to get Lotus handling in a vehicle that's going to weigh, it, like, It's 5,000 5, 5, pounds. 5, but pounds. then oh, the no. next day... We met at the Lucid's uh, uh, dealership, showroom, whatever you call it, in Beverly Hills. Yep. We drove – and they didn't plan this. They claimed they didn't plan this, but we drove a 409-mile route up to San Francisco. The uh, EPA range for the Tesla Model S long range, 405. So we beat that right out of the gate. First time anyone besides Lucid had ever driven one. We beat the, I beat that. And then we left San Francisco, drove south to their headquarters in near San Jose in Newark, Newark. California. Yep. Another 36 miles. I wasn't trying to hypermile. My car still had 30 miles of range showing. His had 72 because he was like accelerating slowly and not right. being a you know, jackass like I was. And it was it was mind blowing. You know what I mean? It was this like, was it, all before they came out with the EPA. This range. was before the EPA stuff. So they right. he had told me privately that he was looking at 517 miles of range. EPA gave him 520. Yeah. So. You so know. that's one. You know, when yeah. we talk about uh, our car, truck, SUV, the year awards, we have six criteria. Mm-hmm. We have value, safety, efficiency, engineering, design, and then 
performance of incident function, how well the vehicle does its job. So John just unpacked a ton of it right there. Uh, obviously, engineering excellence is amazing. Um, efficiency, I mean, there's no – it is the most efficient vehicle on the, that you can buy. Period. Period. Today. In the history. In ever. the history. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, by the way, the one I drove was 930 horsepower, and there's yeah. one that's slightly less efficient that makes 1,111 horsepower. Right. You know, so then you talk same. about, well, how does it – do its job as an electric car. I think we just covered off. It uh, does it quite well. It's, yeah. It is It is incredibly fast. I think uh, the fastest version, 0 to 60 in like 2.4 seconds. We haven't even tested it. No, we've only tested, we, by the way, we haven't tested a, a Dream Edition. We've only tested the Grand Touring. Right. So the Grand Touring, which is only only 800 horsepower, you know what I mean, is, is 2.4. Like God knows what the, the like 1,000, you know, the, the, the four sticks version will do. Mm. And they have a three motor version coming. I mean, it's just nuts. Right, right. You know. So I mean that I mean the the answers I think are, are pretty clear. Uh, it was a, and by the way it was it was a it was a big win. Um, the car we had, if we're candid, wasn't it wasn't perfect. It no, was it was early. malfunctioning. Actually. It had had yeah. some glitches, mostly to the uh, infotainment system. Yep. We couldn't access the and, awesome. And to be fair, when system. I drove it, the, the infotainment system was down for the count. I mean it was not. And they said. Yeah, and they, they, you know, look, they were candid. They're like, you know how our radio works, right? I'm like, yeah. They're like, we have a radio. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, right. like, okay, I get that, I get that. But you know, it is still a it is a historic achievement, and it is a very it's a very uh, deserving winner. It is the first time Motor Trends ever given uh, Car of the Year award to a vehicle for their very first product. Yeah, People, I, I would asterisk that because the Model S, yes, it was their second product, but that Roadster had nothing to do with anything. Well, you know, that still was, technically, 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 okay. but yeah. Uh, and then but same an, chief engineer. Same chief engineer. Yeah. And I think, look, people can be I, – I, I, I was a little skeptical uh, until I s- drove it and then went on the same uh, deep dive on the, on the technology that you had up at the headquarters. We should, we should actually talk about that. So their headquarters is like if Willy Wonka had a car company, right. it would kind of be like this place. Right. But, but what I was saying is I, before going there, I was like, ah, Peter Rollinson, yes, he was chief engineer. But this could be like is – this, is this just Model S? Uh, version 2.0 with a different skin right yeah. and uh at first glance you might say well you know they made it a little more efficient it's the same package it's, it's a five nice seat luxury sed- sedan you know yeah, nicer. but when you see how they did it and what they did um uh, it is absolutely uh mind-blowing i mean they they show they'll walk you through and they'll show you like this is the original tesla model s uh motor package and it's this big and it's impressive and it's gotten that company this far oh and then they'll show you the the Model 3 and the Model Y, that motor and inverter package, and it's like, you know, it's whatever. a little smaller, it's, a little less powerful, a little yeah, smaller. a little smaller, more efficient. Yeah. And they actually were like, uh, credit to them, this, the, the being able to pr- produce this and put it into serial production, this is a big deal, it's a phenomenal unit. And then they show you the one in the air, <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the air, and it is, sorry, in the dream, and it is... Um, in the air, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. In, the, in the air. And it is tiny. I mean, the, the party trick is they pull up... Uh, they can pull it out of a 22-inch standard rollerboard. Yeah, uh, a, a suitcase that you can take on the a plane. Way, what and that includes the motor, the motor transmission, and, and the inverter. And the yeah, it's crazy all together. And it's 300 percent more powerful. Two, 295. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Than whatever Tesla has. Yeah. Um, and then you go and they can do the same party trick with the batteries. Everything is more efficient. It's I mean, the one I tell people it. about is the headlights. Like they have yeah. five people with PhDs working on headlights, and, and you know your car. Uh, if you're listening, you have two bulbs that, that are your headlights. They have nine thousand little matrix LEDs that yeah. like work like an insect's eyes, and because it's like as thin as you know, I don't know, it's about two inches thick or even smaller, maybe. It makes the frunk that much bigger. Right. So if you look at like a like a Mercedes S Class headlight, it's eighteen inches deep. This is maybe maybe two inches deep, so you get that much more storage space up front, and and it uses that much less electricity, making it more efficient, and they're they're more aerodynamic than any other car. Oh, and, and, f- and on and, and on, on and on. The fact that it's all it's all LEDs, and it's basically just the light, and then some software. Uh, here's the thing: if you want to get the highest rating according to the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, the IHS, you need smart headlights. Mm-hmm. You need headlights that are super bright, cast, uh, you know. A, a lot of clarity on the road ahead, but also will turn around corners. Right. Lucid's found a way to do it through software. So they don't actually have a physical motor. There's they no motor. There's right. no motor. There's nothing that moves they, the they headlights. They just turn on lights that point left as exactly. you turn the steering wheel yeah. left. Yeah. It's, because they're miniaturized. Exactly. It's totally bizarre. Yeah, it's totally cool. And then the, the Rivian we should talk about. You yes. know, we obviously did this uh, stunt, for lack of a, a much more elegant term, where we drove 7,700 miles across America on the Trans-America Trail 
all electric, charge them up every night. All off road or all off road, almost yeah. all off road. Yeah, basically all off road. Um, and uh, that vehicle, you know, it's not as efficient, but it's revolutionary. Four motors. Yeah. First yeah. first vehicle, first electric vehicle out there on the road that has a motor at each wheel. Yeah, and that was to me was game changing. And if I if I can quote Frank uh, Marcus here, he's our, he's our technical director at Motor Trend. He said it best, and you guys can go watch this video. Yes. Um, he said that what, what, what you realize after off-roading in the Rivian is that, you know, having low gears, a transfer case, and all that stuff, it, 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 it's a Band-Aid on a terrible powertrain. Uh, internal combustion is horrible for off-road because what you want is, like, not to go that quickly, uh, and you want massive torque. Well, guess what? EVs, as we know, they make their peak torque before they even start spinning. So, you you know, in, like, a really powerful we, – we, we brought the Ram TRX along as a support vehicle. And in that, it makes a ton of torque, but you got to, like, goose the motor. So suddenly you're flooring it, then slamming on the brake, then flooring it to get over a rock, then slamming on the brake. The Rivian just, like, elegantly just, like – you know, glided right. over these obstacles. And, and I always say, like, you know, Sean Holman, who's, who's our, um, he's our four-wheel expert at, at the company, let's just say, and I was texting him because he drove the wave after me. I'm like, dude, this is going to blow your mind. You're not going to believe this. And he was so skeptical. Even Sean was like, yeah, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. It's a, as a clean sheet design, like, you really can't do better in terms of for the mission at hand of off-roading. Like, yeah. battery, some software, a motor at each wheel. Really smart suspension. Really smart, yes. Yeah. Uh, air, suspension air suspension with diagonally linked dampers, hydraulic dampers. From McLaren. From Well, same supplier as McLaren, but yeah, super cool. <laughs> but what I loved was, you know, because the wave I was on, we started in Georgia and, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, deep, deep south. And people would see it. And, you know, it's a, it's a different looking truck, to put it uh, politely. It's, you know, it's kind of like this yep. weird French anime looking thing. People walk up, what is it? We talk to them, and they, first of all, they all kind of like the size because they're all, everyone in the South has a monster pickup truck, and right. they're kind of bummed out about it because they're just enormous. And then, you know, they're looking, they're thinking, eh, how, 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 how's the range? And then you go, eh, blah, blah, blah. Also, 835 horsepower. Like, your truck, make your, your Raptor makes like, you know, 410 or whatever it makes, 450. This is 835, yeah. and they're just like, what? And you can see their minds changing in front of you. Like, yeah. Wow, that's cool. You yep, know? yep, yep. And then, and then you pull the camp stove, the kitchen out of the side. The five thousand dollars <laughs> optional induction range with a sink. Uh, yeah, powered sink. Powered you sink. Can, you can like power off your dirty dishes. It's it's brilliant. Yeah, uh, but that isn't why we picked our truck of the year. We no. we invited. Oh boy, it was actually a fairly large field this year. Yeah, Maverick was right there. We had the Hummer. Uh, we had the new Toyota. Um, we had Nissan. We had yeah, the well, Nissan. We the had Frontiers. the Nissan Frontier. Uh, we had Ranger, Tremor, uh, a Raptor? bunch of traditional. New, new we Raptor. had Raptor. Yeah, we had, yeah. You know, a bunch of traditional gasoline powered pickup trucks, along with the uh, the only other EV was the Hummer uh, EV truck. And it really kind of, I don't think it was close, right? Blew everybody away. I think the Maverick had a good showing. Maverick was actually Maverick's yes, a, And remember, there's that hybrid Maverick, 42 miles a gallon. And yes. And it's really, really good vehicle. So hats off to Ford. But yeah, I mean, the Rivian is just like, it's just like next level thing. It, it's here, Here's how good it is. Tesla just announced, their, if they ever make it, the Cybertruck is going to be four motors. Right. Because I'm sure they got one of the first ones. And, in fact, I remember Rivian telling me, they're like, we know Tesla bought one because we know, we know where they're going. And they're like, oh, man, this is game-changing. Yep. You know, you yep. got to have those four And motors. I'll tell you, I, the one thing I was very interested in is that Rivian is focusing so much on the off-road performance of this truck. Um, and I'm like, you know, from what I understand about the truck market and talking to a lot of people, well, a lot of people don't go off-road. Like, yeah. You know, and it is so good on-road. It's it, so good on-road. And it's like, you guys, I mean, there's they are, you know, what do they call them, air haulers? Yeah. Like a lot of truck owners never put anything in the bed, never tow yep. anything with it, never yep. take it off-road. Or if yep. it's off-road, it's on a fire yeah, it's road. It's a lifestyle vehicle. Yes. It, uh, and now, we'll say the other thing, amazing thing to me about that truck was that, you know, there, there's like an economy mode. And what that one does is it actually like declutches the rear motor. So you're just in a front-wheel drive vehicle, still 410 horsepower, by the way, in front-wheel drive only. And – it's fine to drive. Sure. Like it was, you know, a lot of times you, if you put a like a gasoline powered car in an eco mode, it's just there's a throttle response. This was this was killer, you know. Right. So they they did really 
clever, savvy engineering on, on uh, you know, again, not, they didn't focus on efficiency. They're not building their own battery packs. They're not, you know, spinning their own motors up with the way Lucid is. But I think they were innovative in a different way. Right. Uh, you know, they, they didn't make the Model S Part 2. They made something no, the world had never seen before. Right. And I think p- part of the duty of awarding an of-the-year award is, like, recognizing that. Yep. The high water we, – we try to award a high water mark for the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's worth noting for those who might be sort of not familiar with it. It is not every car under the sun every year that we look at. Oh, yeah. yeah, so it's, I'm sorry your Corvette didn't win. Corvette yeah, isn't yeah, new this not year. New. Yeah, right, yeah, so yeah. It, it is only the the vehicle in their, their launch year, their their very first um, yeah, model year. Or if they've been significantly updated. Yep. We tend to, that means like a new powertrain, new transmission and engine, right. you know, something like that. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was – I think we did well. And, again, like Genesis, I wish we would have you know, known a little bit of, about this. But, like, they have a, a well, and we should and, GV70. And we can give them uh, a shout-out because uh, their vehicle, honestly, was probably the the biggest win. It is the toughest – Toughest uh, segment in terms of overall number of competitors. Yeah, SUV, everyone, S- SUV is huge. SUVs this have taken over the world. Right. Yeah. So there was yeah, it's a dominant species. In our 2022 SUV of the year competition, there was there were many more competitors than either car or truck. And honestly, once people got into that vehicle and drove it, it was like this, this is it. This it is why are we doing away. why are we doing this? Like this one is so much yeah. so much better. And than now you can have it as an EV, which is a great segue into our guest, who I just got the sign that he showed up. So we're gonna talk to Mr. Reggie Watts. Yes. I'm super excited about this. And I'm super excited about the inevitable show. Me too. Can't wait to chat with him and uh, hope you guys all enjoy our interview with Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Very exciting to have you here. Thanks. Um, before we get started, Ed has actually prepared a dossier on you. Ooh. This is like, this is like uh, nice. opposition research. But I want to start by saying that he's got a one-year-old, so he has no idea what I'm about to say. I have a four-year-old. <laughs> You're on Storybot. Yes. You did the DNA episode. Yes, I've I seen did. that seven thousand times. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm. It's funny now, just starting to hear from all my friends. I have kids. They're like, "Oh, you're on Story." It's kind of cool. It's it's the best. It's the best kid show. It's incredible. Well, how about for the people who don't know what it is? It's like an educational show, <laughs> okay. but it's actually like really well done. Like really, actually, good music. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you talk about you did the, the DNA episode where you know the the, the bots ask what is. I th- Why do people look different? I yes, think was yes. The, the, the title of it, which is such a great—I mean, what a great thing for kids to learn about, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I just popped in for my one bit, but um, you know, everybody that runs the show—they're all like kind of music nerds, um, you know—and they love like re- they have really good taste in music, and they just wanted, you know, they had kids and they had like an idea to make a really cool show yeah. that was based off of their idea of what a kid show should be, which I think is Storybots, at least from all my. Gen X friends are all just like it's a dope show, and I'm like, okay, good. I, it's it's a show you could actually watch. Like Snoop Dogg's on it. I mean, it's it's great. You know? Yeah, it's like, it's like all these people you grew up with, and now they're doing this good kid show. And 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 again, the music's actually decent. Where most you know kid show music's like this horrible, never ending earworm of death. You know? Yeah, it's yeah, like, Glockenspiel <laughs> City. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. That's how we're starting this uh, this interview. I just ready. I have to. We were we, we were. I was just like when, when they said Reggie's going to be a guest. I was like. You know, I don't really watch the late show. I, I'm, I'm kind uh, of familiar. Who does? Oh boy! <laughs> well, this is me. I, look, no, no, no. I, I, I don't watch it. Wow. I don't watch yeah, it. I, yeah. I mean, I'm there when tapes. But yeah, I don't exactly. Watch it. Yeah, uh, but Not I pass I out it. on the couch every night at nine twenty-five. You know, a kid wakes me up. But we uh, yeah. do watch on the weekends. We watch TV and Storybots. He's obsessed with. And I'm like, so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That's hilarious. It. Yeah. Well, we are here with. Reggie Watts, who is on The Late Show with James Corden. Yeah, The Late Late Show. The Late Late Show. Uh, actor, comedian, musician. Beatboxer. Beatboxer. <laughs> Storybots, uh, VO, great hair. Uh, does look like Jerry Seinfeld. Yes, does look I, like- hi guys. I'm, this is my Jerry Seinfeld impression. <laughs> Hello. That's pretty good. Very good. Pretty good. Very good. I'm, on, I'm, on a, I'm on a podcast with him, so I. I, I, I oh, really? To, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. This so, is what he sounds like. It's that's not at all. Good, not even close. It's, it's close. He's more like ah. Yeah, I, I he does that. I, no, I know. I can't do it. It's no, impossible. I'm being conscious I, of it. I really can't. But I've gotten that before. Yes. So, why are why are you here with us? Is that you're also a huge? And I'm going to say huge because I did a lot of uh, research, and I think right. you're a I mean, huge. Look at, this is all you. You're a huge <laughs> car guy. Yes, you're, I am. you're a huge car fan, and yes. you're kind of a you're kind of a stealth car fan. I feel like I kind of dug through your Instagram, yes. 
And I noticed that you post a lot of random pictures of cars without saying anything about it. You just <laughs> kind of put it out there, and it's a lot. Some of it's sort of Detroit iron, but there's some foreign cars in there. Yeah, they're all kind of vintage. And then you do a lot from your own car, from your personal car. Yeah. And I've read some interviews where you've uh, talked about vehicles you've been in. You had a famous moment with Jack Black, apparently. Oh, uh, in a, in a Tesla. Oh yes, 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 yes. That's right. Yes. So, so this is, and then we heard from the fine folks at Podcast One that you're also a big Porsche guy, and you, and we're trying to figure this out. You currently own a, a, Tacon, a Taycan, yes, Turbo S, a Turbo S, yeah, and a 911 C4S, 992. Okay, great, yeah. C4S. Yes. Okay, we, they had it down as a Turbo S. And well, a Turbo S. I have a Turbo S on the way. It ah, should be, it should be nice. here in a few months. Okay, good. and now you want to yeah. ask him why you didn't get a GT3. I'm not going to say anything about that. No, no. I, I, I actually ordered one. I had an allocation and? for a GT3 Touring. Oh. Um, oh you got to get the wing. Anyway, that's one yeah, the I, Well, I thought the Touring was stealth. You know, it's like I'm kind of like it, the guy that, stealth. you know, it's like I have, I have friends that are like, you know, car people. And they, I just, I don't like a bright look at me sports car because it's like, do you want more sports car on your already sports car? So for me, it's the opposite. I like it. I like it being subdued, but like people kind of do a slow double take, and they're like, "What is it? Oh, oh, that's awesome!" Instead of like, Whoa, you know. So is that why you got? And is it? Did you get chalk? What what paint did you get in your for car? the Ty, for the Taycan? I got a coffee beige. That's what it was. I was oh. looking at the picture. I was like, "Is it chalk nice. or is it coffee beige?" Nice. I wasn't sure about it because you know, like when you look at those color palettes online, yes. it's hard to tell. Really, yep. you got to see a car in sunlight. That's oh my the real god, trick! Sunlight's the only way to look at a car. Everything it, else is like you don't really see the color. Not at all. Not even yeah. close. This was like the most obscure. Like I couldn't figure it out at all. And I like chalk. Chalk was great, but chalk's also an older color. Yep. And so uh, all my I was. Saying it to a bunch of my friends, like, "What would you think, beige or whatever?" And usually, I was a white white car guy, especially with Tesla when I used to have Teslas. But so I got the beige, and it is just it gets so much attention. Hang on, Everybody. pause for a second. What does white car guy mean? I, I, to me, so thirty nine percent of I'm a white car. Guy. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, well, yeah, hang on. We're, yeah. we're all Porsche owners here. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, uh, you know, B A S F told me thirty nine percent of new cars globally are white. So to me, it's yeah. like the like. Anyways, why? What, what's what's attractive about white cars? Well, for me in California, you got you got smog, you know, you get that air pollution, and you got heat. And so for right. me, it's heat rejection, right? Um, and uh, keep the car cooler, uh, better for the paint, all that stuff. And also, it's an electric car, so you want to keep it cool. Anyways, and then on top of that. Uh, it stays cleaner. It looks clean. Yes. Okay. That's actually, I'm lazy okay. uh, and white cars I'm, I'm, hide the I'm dirt. I'm taking notes about, about the oh, heat Oh, definitely. Thing. Black cars are the worst. Oh, yeah. There's water spots, yeah, dust, uh, everything. Every, every other color is relatively cool. But, um, yeah. All right. Now, so uh, you own a very sporty gasoline-powered car and a very sporty electric car. Yes. Uh, how do you how do you feel about both? How, how do you feel about either? How do they compare? How do they contrast? Well, I mean, you know, I, I had a Tesla. I think the first car I had here in L.A. was a Tesla uh, P85 and then got a P100 uh, later. But, um, you know, it's like I wanted I – wanted, well, Porsche was a brand that I would always – growing up in the 80s, you guys would know about this. This is way, way before your time. But um, in the 80s – <laughs> I, I think he's older than you. No, no, no. I don't know. We are all within five years. Age okay. I think okay. so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Gen X forever, man. That's right. Um, the only gen than me, that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but um, yeah. So, like, when I for, when I I guess uh, I was interested in Porsche, but but in the '80s, it was always represented as like the the asshole in a in a teen comedy. Like, yeah. always oh, drove yeah. a Porsche. So Porsche had this kind of like douchebag kind of vibe to it that I held on through all the way through the 90s and then everyone was always like Porsche there's no substitution for you know Porsche dri- it's a driver's car driver's car driver's car I was like could you guys shut up about driver's car what does that even mean right. and then I drove a uh, I, I ordered a Porsche because I I, I I got a gig and I was interested in the 992 because of the technology. Like, I was really going deep on, like, oh, what do they do for design? This is a whole new generation, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I, I really want to dig it. And one, and one of my friends had a has a Cayman, mm-hmm. uh, one of the guys, uh, one of the producers at the show. So got it, and then and, and I, d- I purposefully did not drive a Porsche until I got that, that 911. Then I got it, and it just blew me away i understood immediately i was like oh i can feel the texture of the road through the wheel mm, right. which yeah. was insane yeah, to even yeah. think about and and i and every move i made it just felt like i was the car and then i, I got it i was like oh this is cyborg 
This is like, and this is your career for us. That's the career for yeah, the C four S. So that was my first Porsche. Gotcha. Okay, so you're relatively new to the brand. I'm pretty new to the brand. Like gotcha, I've had gotcha, that one gotcha. for let's say two years, and then uh, and then of course the Tycon came around, and I just told myself if I get a good gig, if I get a sweet gig, I'll get a Tycon Turbo S because I don't want to do the lower end. I got the C4S because I was like, oh, well, that's... Because the way I spec'd it, it almost is the price of a Turbo S anyways. But, right. Well, that's... Yeah, just wait till you spec your Turbo S. It'll... <laughs> oh, my God. Well, it's... <laughs> right. Yeah, I, it's yeah. done. It's on its way. Okay, but, okay. but Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I was like, oh, I'll do the C4S because everyone was like, no, it's a great car. And most people are like, it's more car than you need anyways. The C4, oh, definitely. C4S. Yeah, yeah. But beautiful. you need the Turbo. I well, would, just, I would so, say, like, don't listen to anyone. Yeah, yeah. I know. But I know. let's pause here for a second yeah. because, okay, so you, you previously, when you first came to... Uh, LA, you yeah. had a so like a 2013, 2015 P85 Tesla Model S yeah, P85. That's correct. Okay. And then you subsequently moved on to 100. Yeah. Any other EVs of note or vehicles of note prior to that? You grew I, up in Montana. I had a TTRS. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, before that. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I had the TTRS in conjunction with the. Uh, so, I always had a gas car and a, an electric car. Okay. I, but my electric car is the primary driver. Right, okay. right, right. TTRS, but for those listening, that's a cool five-cylinder turbocharged Audi uh, yeah. fun car. I always call it, like, my first supercar. Yeah, little, exactly. Little that's kind of what it was for me, too. Yeah. Right. It was a okay. Right. So then, all right, so we talked through the 992. Now, tell us, because you, you're a – I assume you, you enjoyed your time with Tesla. You really like the Model S. What's the difference moving oh, yeah, into oh. Porsche and then into Taycan in particular? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I love I love the S because I love the autopilot. You know, I was probably you know one of the, the idiots that used it seventy percent of the time. You know, even back then, I just loved it. I love that idea of being on the road and being able to not be focused constantly, like on a bumper to bumper stop and go Beverly Boulevard drive from work yep. or whatever. Yep. Aside from stoplights, which you had to, it, it did not recognize, <laughs> um, it held the road really well. So I really yeah. enjoyed that. So then going to, to the Taycan, um, it doesn't have that. It has inner drive. I, I got inner drive. Um, it, it does some steering, but it's mostly just keep your hands on the wheel just to relax right. the drive. But I will say the the feeling between both of those cars, one, the Tesla feels like uh, like a souped up golf cart. Like like it just it goes really fast. Uh, and it, it, but it doesn't. There's no feeling to it. There's no connection to the road, really. It's just, uh, it's more like a. It feels digital, like right. you're a video game character in the real world. <laughs> and right. um, the Taycan feels like it's like a mountain goat. It feels planted to the ground. Um, again, you get that road tactility, that for that feeling through the wheels all the way to the steering wheel. Same steering wheel as the 992, which is to me the perfect size. Yeah, they, were, steering they wheel. were smart to do that. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah. And everything, so, and it just feels like a precision, it's like a scalpel, um, as opposed, and I know that the, you know, the Plaid or whatever is ridiculous, and yes. they, um, but it's still not a driver's car. The Plaid, to me, is not really a driver's car. They're catching up. They're like, oh, what else do drivers like? Oh, I guess we'll add these carbon ceramics. Oh, what else do drivers like? They're, right. they're thinking that way. Right, right, right. Reverse soft- engineered, almost. Yes, exactly. It's reverse engineered, whereas Porsche is just like, listen, our infotainment system will be very confusing, and it won't be as fast, and, you know, but... The most important yeah, part, the a driving. Porsche badge. Yeah, the Porsche, <laughs> you know, the driving. Um, yeah, yeah. And and so when I get into the Porsche, also it turns heads. Not that I'm looking for that in a car. I wasn't expecting it, but people look at my car all the time. Hmm. And I think if you, that's re- a gorgeous design. I it's mean, a beautiful. So, so Misha Borkert, who's the, now the chief of design for Lamborghini, when he was a Porsche, oh. he did the Mission E, and that kind of it was such a successful show car that Oof. that launched him to Lamborghini. Is it beautiful? I don't know. Which one? The Taycan. I, I think it is the way I have it. The way I have it set up. It the, sh- the show car was like wow. The Taycan is very good. The, the new. Have you seen the GTS? It came out as a wagon, so it's, a, it's yeah. called the Taycan the GTS face of it Sport still, Turismo. It's a little leaves me a little flat. The, ge- the gecko. Mm. The yeah, gecko yeah. look. Well, I, well, I got the blue. So I got the I got the blue. Uh, what do they call it? Fro- I forgot what is it. Uh, whatever that the option head, is. It's the a, headlights. It's a blue. Yeah, it's a blue tinted like a frost, whatever color mm-hmm. blue yep. with the beige. Um, plus, uh, oh, nice. plus yeah. I got, uh, uh, like twenties on all the windows, um, with the black border. 
I think it looks pretty lethal. But I think also beige really does it. Other okay. colors of the of the Tycon for me, like yeah, it's, it's it's okay. I mean, yeah, but of course, I don't. I would love to buy a Mission R, but uh, <laughs> it looks like well, a, it looks yeah. like from a Murakami, the Japanese uh, animator. It looks like one of the. Uh, oh yeah, it looks yes, it looks I like because it has that kind of sad. The tear, yes, yeah, the, the tear. tear eye it's like a Gundam thing, thing too, yes. because it's like yes. yeah, uh, okay. agreed. Well, I, you know, I, I like it. I, I mean, I'll, I'll just say the front isn't the greatest. I think it's good, the, but the side profile is Ooh. just gorgeous because it's got and that nine eleven rear. It's got the nine eleven taper on the rear windows. I'm telling you, man, the new wagon, the the sport to. Turismo Taycan GTS is just in red. It's like knockout. I'll, I'll have knockout. to. I'll have to see it because slower than your car. I'm not. Right. Yeah, it's like I'm. I'm such a sedan guy. Like I think oh, the nice. ultimate intersection of everything that you need in a car is a sedan. Ooh, I wish more people thought like that. I, I, I really do because yeah. like and I I'm, an, I'm an anti SUV guy. I don't like. I think SUVs look like baby carriages. No offense. <laughs> no, they, no, they no, look, no. They look like fat sneakers or baby carriages. And some some German makers actually manage to like get the proportions correct. Um, yeah. You know, like it's a tough. BMW. It, it, it's, it, it's it's tough though. Audi. SUVs look like SUVs. Yeah, yeah they just look like yeah. yeah. Fundamentally, and, yeah. I mean, the Porsche, the Cayenne, the KN is like. Obviously, gorgeous the right. GTS. Um, well, I wouldn't say obviously. Well, go, that's your well, opinion. Well, I'm saying like of all the <laughs> SUVs out there, it looks the most like capable. And I hate the Urus. I think the Urus looks oh, like Urus. a yeah, I, think, I think the Urus is the best looking SUV Ugh. by by. Oh no! I, 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 it, either the G wagon or the Urus. Either, it looks either. like an Autobot. Which is great. <laughs> I don't great. know. I think that's or it looks great. like the thigh section of Voltron. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. It's it's like there's like where does this click into? I don't know. Well, that's just me. Before, before we That's fight much me. more, we're gonna fight. Let, oh. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah, yeah. What is there anything you miss going from Tesla yes. to Porsche? Is there anything that like Tesla range? did, like range, for instance, or or the supercharger network? Sure. Just to put a couple ideas I get in your it. head. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, range is terrible. I mean, it's like you know, I've got, I get two twenty. I get two twenty on a full charge, and it's rated at one ninety two, so that's pretty good. Yeah, so that's yeah. pretty good. I mean, but that's it's, Porsche. It's terrible. Actually. That's Porsche, yeah, though, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, it gets one ninety, and they're like, well, it goes two twenty. It's like, well, it goes zero to sixty in two point six. It does two point two. That's that's Porsche. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the range, yeah, is definitely. But I don't really care about it. I'm not really interesting. I, I mean, I, I want to, I want to, but it's so fun to drive. I kind of, I just don't care. It's it makes like, up for it. I, I'm yeah, because I'm driving mostly in the city. I'm definitely more on edge driving at long distance. Right. So, so there's that, um, but I will say that that's not as big of a, a deal breaker. I mean, I seriously considered getting a Lucid, but um, just because that 520 range yes, is insane, insane. Yes. Um, and and it's got kind of equal performance stats. I don't know what the driving feel is like, but anyways, uh, so I did notice that, and I think uh, you were saying like differences. Between. Yeah, just you know, like Tesla would have you know like uh, 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 the the fart noises. Yeah, um, now, Porsche now, doesn't have fart noises. Here's here's where <laughs> here's where like I was a big Tesla guy for a while, but as soon as he started doing that stuff, and then also just I don't know, I'm getting Elon tired out. I just think like uh, yeah. he gets a Elon lot fatigue, a lot of attention, but really it's his engineers and designers that that yep. get that should get all the praise, and you just don't hear about them. Um, but. And then, like, the fart noise and all that stuff. I'm just like, yeah, I get it. You can do it. You can do it. But I do, like, I think that Porsche, what the Taycan, what the Taycan represents is a car that is absolutely Porsche. They nailed that. It feels like a Porsche, which is, like, a huge deal. I mean, yep. creating your first electric car and still preserving the driving dynamics, yeah, it's heavy. I can I can feel yeah. it, you know, on yeah. certain dips. But it's, and no more, like it's not any heavier than a Tesla. No. Same weight. Right? No. Yes, yeah, yeah. relatively same weight. But I will say that uh, they succeeded in creating a, a perfect intersection of performance. Um, their version of efficiency is they, – they still call it an efficient car even though the range – some people be like, it doesn't have good range. It's like efficiency is about how, how it handles all the power and, and right. how it delivers the power to me. That's okay. a, that's a huge part of enough. efficiency yeah, yeah. when I hear efficiency. So – I think it's a pretty efficient car, 800 volt architecture, cool. You know, Lucid's going 900 or whatever, which also yeah. has advantages. But uh, supposedly faster charger, but according to independent, you know, charging people, the tes- Tesla still charge faster technically. Um, technically. Well, I would that say is such a that's such a can of worms argument, but like, it's also but, consistently because they have yeah, the supercharger. Yeah, the bigger, true. But, but, and this but, is so. This is the question I want because you real you, quick though lo- for those listening, Lucid's the king of fast charging right now. Right? Oh, yeah, because voltage yeah. just means the size of your pipe. Essentially, right. and yeah, you know, and 900 volts is bigger. A thousand than is the next frontier. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But, but, yeah. but well, because Johnny mentioned it at the at the outset. So we've established the Porsche. You love the driving experience; it delivers. It's better than the Tesla in that regard. Range obviously suffers. 
But what's your experience been charging the Taycan? Have you done any? Have you done a lot of fast charging? Is it is it like helpful, or are you just like? Meh? I don't really. I charge at home. Oh, right. I mean, I charge and at night. So I remember. So you know, we've been really involved with Tesla since the beginning. We we you know, mm-hmm. Motor Train gave it Car of the Year when it was brand new. Twenty thirteen. Yeah. I'll never. I'll never. And it was the time what was really revolutionary about the Tesla was it was like two hundred fifty miles of range it was like shocking back in right. two thousand thirteen. Like what? Yeah. And I remember this one Tesla engineer we talked to. I said, you know, you because they they monitor they can monitor everything you do. Yes. And they said, yeah. So the first week if someone owns a Tesla, they charge everywhere they go they just go to chargers they drive two chargers That's and funny. then the second week they have it they just plug in every night and then the third week they plug it in when it's empty exactly right. and is that kind of what yes. you're experiencing with the yeah with the the, ty- well, the Taycan's funny because like the way i drive it's just, it's just like i have 220 miles and then by the end of the day it's at 180 you know and then so yeah. i i just i i have to drive that i just like driving if what i call uh proactively efficient <laughs> okay well, so, well define that what, what is that well it's like what with an electric car also the di- you were talking about difference between like oh the gas car and the electric car gas car gives you that visceral like that beautiful feel especially in a porsche the sound of the flat six is just unmistakable and it and it it actually weirdly gives you energy when you hear it it's just like more like ah oh, like when i do a, a nice hard acceleration you feel that everything just going into place and just working orchestrally it's like oh that's a great feeling and so it has that but the, but an EV is that instant torque. It's like it's a precision instrument. So if I if I need to make a gap, I know I can. <laughs> right. It's like I just know I can do it. And I also know I have a lot more space than I think. Or when traffic's oncoming and I have to go across an intersection, I know I've got – I'll clear that gap even though other people will be like, huh, there's no way I'm going to make – you know, like they're huh. – it's like I just cruise through it and then I look in my rearview mirror – one was thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Then the car is passing. I'm like, I have so much yeah, and room. It's, it's funny how once you get used to that, it's really hard to go back to not having instantaneous throttle response. It, it is weird. Well, that's why I wanted the Turbo S. That's what that's what conned me into you know right, my cycle. Right, right. I was like, well, because I'm obsessed with like knowing why is something the best. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. eventually, if in the future, if I could get a Rimats Nevera, I would do that. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> so this is wild. I mean, I, uh, this is great because. Why are you even doing the job you do? You you spend an inordinate <laughs> amount of time thinking about this. Like this is so consistent. I I read a couple articles yeah. on you. One of them is from Vulture dot com, where they go through every question you've ever asked on James Corden. Oh James, my god, James Corden show. <laughs> yes. And I was like, I'm gonna read a couple oh, of these. Yeah, this, yeah, I read them all the way through, and at least for like the first couple of years, like every like fourth question was about cars. Oh, like you yeah. asked you asked some like pretty you asked major celebrities some really insane questions about cars, including what you were just talking about, like finding a gap in traffic. I think yeah. you asked that of like, it's like James Vanderbeek or somebody. Oh, interesting. Um, I, I, was I do like, remember something I was like, like that. what is going on with this guy? In fact, I wanted to ask you, yeah, James Vanderbeek, episode 10, when you're driving a car, are you anticipating the behavior of the people based on the angles of the cars that you see in traffic or are you simply enjoying the ride? Oh, <laughs> sick. Oh like, my God. What, yeah. You, and in addition to cars, EV cars, um, you seem to spend a lot of time thinking about the future, like mm. about uh, consciousness, about mm. artificial intelligence. Like mm. this is why, like you, like the perfect guest for the show. That's all about what we're talking about with the inevitable, like the coming wave of electrification, and also cars without steering wheels. Cars without steering wheels. Like where? So in. let's go. Let's go a step beyond <laughs> yeah. um, EVs. Where do you think this is going? I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's 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 interesting. The future is interesting. It's like the combination of EV toll and um, you know level five autonomy is is it's it's actually going to be kind of a weird bleeded intersection. But I think first we got to figure out what is the primary um, power source or the fuel source. Like, is it going to be is it going to be direct combustion hydrogen? Is it going to be hydrogen fuel fuel stacks? Is it going to be um, hybrid? You know, battery. Uh, hydrogen? Is it going to not be hydrogen at all? Is it going to be uh, iron oxide batteries? Are we going to figure out chemistries that don't use cobalt and all of the gross, you know, blood diamond style? Yes, they're uh, already figuring that out. Elements, yes. yes. And everyone's like, you know, they're they're there. Is it solid state batteries? No, we've got problems with dendrites. So like, is that going to ever going to catch on? Or is it going to be Tesla's, you know, idea for their new bigger batteries? So we need to kind of figure out what that is. Do the chemistries change enough to create uh, more energy density, less weight, because that's going to be a huge thing for uh, flying machines. I was going to say flying devices. Is that kind of, <laughs> Fly, I like airplanes. But but I like air, flying yeah, air, <laughs> flying, flying, flying devices. Good, What's yeah, your, yeah. But so I think like once we figure whatever that that is, there'll be a universal 
uh, power source. I hope it's some form of hydrogen. I, I, I like the idea of hydrogen. I think it's very right. – I know it's tough to make and it's tough to make it green. But uh, if someone cracks that, I think it's all over, plus Porsche's uh, investment into e-fuels, which I think is great, or at least carbon neutral, right. um, yeah. offset, whatever, uh, carbon capture making fuel. I think that's going to be determined first. Then that obviously influences the design of what we have. Then autonomy is an interesting thing, being able to – vehicles being able to talk to one another um, in order to organize efficiency. Because what's cheaper, creating high-speed rails or or getting autonomy to actually unify so that freeway driving is efficient? But then again, I love driving. So I don't know. The, right. The fut- no, that becomes – for me, that's the weird thing is like – you know, and you hear people talk about this. Like cars will want to not have steering wheels, and I'm like, well, "What's the point of my life at that?" Point? <laughs> I, mean, I don't really, I don't really know how to do anything else. I'll probably be either, you know, as I was saying, dead or retired by then. But right. that's an interesting thought. Like, what, what, what does a car without a steering wheel do? And do we want it? That's yeah, the other thing. Like, I do don't you know. know. Just because it's coming, do we want it? I know. And you know, as humans, we've never been able to really say no to a technology. You it's know, true. It's, no, it's, it's, we have a hard time with. It's that. just like the question you asked in episode four to Claire, yeah. Claire Danes. Do you believe you arti- stalker, artificial intelligence will be the beginning or end of human civilization? Do you yeah. believe autonomous cars will be the beginning or end of human civilization? I mean, I don't. You know, the funny thing is, is like time and space, right? Those are the things that we're constantly managing. Like we're like, well, now you know, since the pandemic, you know, time and space have entered a new intersection with like you know a telepresence of of sorts. Right. Although shitty resolution telepresence, right. but um, if I may say, you can beep that out. So I apologize. Yeah, I think uh, we can say that. Okay, good. Um, you know, uh, I think autonomy is. I think it's really great because you know, obviously, when we drive, we see all the different driving styles. Um, you know, because I think of it, every car that's on the road is a is a philosophy essentially. Right. Like every person driving it, well, the car itself plus the driver, it's like, where did they come from? Maybe they grew up in Bogota, so they drive like this. Or maybe they grew up in uh, whatever, Taiwan, and they d- drive like this. Or they grew up in Bronx, whatever. You get all these different driving styles on the road, and they're all competing for dominance, even though there's just supposed to be regular traffic rules that we all know about, but no one really does. Right. And then you kind of see what it, what it averages out to. So it, traffic can be it's so annoying. Often at times, like you'll see, the, uh, like a lane will be stopped, and I'm like, I know it's something dumb. I just know whatever it is. Well, when it's I always out dumb. It's, it's always dumb. dumb. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. just like like the cops pulled over somebody, just a routine traffic stop, and everyone's like, Whoa, what's going on? And, and I'm one of those people that like I'm not looking at it. I'm driving. I'm maintaining the speed, and I'm going. I'm going to. It's what I like to call erasing problems. Like, right. like if I accelerate to get out of the way of something, I'm like, I'm just going to get beyond this. But you're stupidity. not going to rear end the person who is rubbernecking. No, no, no. I'm no. I'm not going to do that. I'm like, I'm. I'm constantly like, oh, what's the angle? What's the approach? Well, how do I, you know, navigate this? But I will say that like autonomy, I think, will be useful in that it will kind of unify the experience of travel right. potentially. Um, but I don't know how I feel. You know, it's a weird thing. It's like when I had a Tesla and I was like one of the few people that had a Tesla, or at least their fast Tesla. And I was I was like, there's nothing faster on the road than this guy. You know, I had that. But then like, well, eventually everybody, I was, I kept thinking like, well, a lot of people are going to have EVs yeah. in the future. Yep. So everyone, but then what I've noticed, I've seen other Taycan drivers and other, you know, uh, I even seen, seen a, or I've even seen a couple uh, Tesla plaids. And they're still driving really tentatively. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I guess it doesn't really matter. You know, just because well, you have it yeah. doesn't mean someone's going to understand what they have. I think it's well, Plaid is so ridiculously fast. I had to when I had it, I had to turn around and return it after 30 minutes. I was like, I'm going to kill somebody. I'm driving so fast, and nobody expects that speed. It's like when we first, when the first Nissan GTR came out, and I drove it on the oh, road, God. and I was letting, I let some, I let colleagues at work drive, and just, yeah. just be mindful that people don't, they see you, and then. You you know blink your eye and then you're on them. They don't yes. people react differently. They're not they're not tuned to reacting to a vehicle that moves this quickly. It's just like that plaid man. Like oh uh, yeah, and the terrible brakes. Yes, <laughs> it's I was like say, yeah, massive there, there, speed, there are, terrible there are, there brakes. Are quicker cars, but they tend to have really good brakes. Yeah. I, I will okay. say that I will say as a quick aside, the Taycan it stops. I mean, it doesn't stop as as soon as a 911. But it stops. Seventeen point three inch rotors. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they're good. Six in the big, front, four big, in the back. Yeah, big big boat anchors. Those, those work yeah. out really really well. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, to your point, I mean, it's it's a weird thing. It's like if you're a driver and you're someone who loves to drive and you're thinking courteously but also assertively, which is what I like to do. I try to get let people. If people wants someone wants to get in, 
I let them get in. Someone wants to yeah, totally, move, move totally. into my lane, but I have space in front of me. I'll accelerate so that they have a gap to pull into. You know, like I'm always thinking that's like good. that. That's good. That's the way you should drive. Because yeah. my, my thing with autonomy, what I want is I want a Porsche GT3 that <laughs> when, when I've had a few drinks can then drive me home. Oh and I don't have to worry yes. about it. Oh no, that's what I want. I, I that's am with all you. I want. I'm 100%. Uh, but I want, I, want, I, want, I want the full, like, I'm going to drive it when I want it. But like yes. you said, like, when you're sitting in traffic on Beverly, this, this, like, let the car do it. I, yes. Like, humans so. shouldn't do that he was not bad at that no i don't i don't need to be like well, this is a driver's car i'm a yeah. driver i'm gonna drive in this <laughs> yeah. two miles an hour right. 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 like i agree with you 100 percent. my dream is someday like a mission r type type vehicle yeah. or whatever whatever, whatever they're, they're gonna actually the, build the yeah. or yeah. whatever or 911 you know whole holy crap are they gonna go electric you know they'll go hybrid first but um whatever it is i would maybe. love yeah maybe i don't know but Porsche, <laughs> that's why they're doing the e-fuels thing but yeah. i will say uh, with an actual round and actual steering wheel, a round steering wheel, which is the best steering wheel. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think he's not so. a yoke fan. Apparently, I, okay. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. I mean, I'll have to drive with a yoke. I drive nine three. I yeah. mean, I always have. I love it, I, but. That wheel, it's way more versatile. You've got way more points. You don't like of the squared off DTM like style or the ovoid. Oh, that's the... that's okay. okay. I mean, but I you're saying a full hoop. I, I want a hoop. I want the okay. top part of the hoop, and I get it. I get the aesthetic of like, oh, it's clean. It's like, and if I was if I if I had like let's say a Lucid or something like a like a like a luxury sedan that just was loaded, a yoke I wouldn't mind, especially if it had that that variable ratio uh, steering um, plus rear rear wheel steer like the EQS has. That's insane the amount of degrees that you get there. No, but it's pretty good. 10 degrees, yeah. 10 degrees is awesome. It so, is pretty good. You know, it's like, I've got a tiny car. It's like, it's not a tiny car. It's like, no, it's like it is. It's like a Hummer. Like the, the, it's oh, like the, <laughs> the Hummer. I mean, I'm impressed with that too. But, but um, yeah, but, Hummer's cool. You know, if I had a car like that, but if, I'm talking about a performance vehicle, like mm-hmm, one mm-hmm. that I want to drive and I really want to drive it, a round wheel just makes more sense to me because oh, yeah. I, I can grab the top. I mean, we all know what we can do with a round wheel. But just, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just like, boy, let me tell you, once I get around wheel, no one's stopping me. Right, right, right. Um, no, but it's just like. Well, it was a, yeah. They fixed the problem that wasn't, you know, it wasn't broken. Nobody asked for a yoke except Michael Knight. Yeah, yeah. I know, totally. So, I mean, I, I, I would, look, I, you know, I, I drove a uh, Bentley uh, race car, a Pikes Peak race car. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That was, on, that was using Porsche's e fuel, which is actually really cool. Oh, sick. Yeah, I didn't making know that. 850 horsepower is pretty Ooh. good. Um, but it had, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a racing uh, yoke. Right. You know, and it was, it, for racing, for track, I get it. Awesome. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. The lock to lock is like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I Actually, mean, I drove the, the uh, Pagani Waira R, which is. Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you. But, anyways, that was a little okay. yoke. That was, that was very good, too. I, so, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry. We're going to say it's like steering wheels. They matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, every tool for the right job or whatever. But uh, but but I would say, like, yes, I agree with you. Like, autonomy in, in a, a performance sports car, I mean, man, that would be the dream. Because, I mean, well, now Porsche, Porsche offers the auto park. Now, which is like closer. Yeah. For, I don't know how good it is, but I, it's probably not. I can park myself. I like I said. I want like I've gone out. I've had a wonderful meal. I've had a couple yeah. of bottles of wine or whatever we've done. Uh, yes, and I want to get home without being a criminal. Yes, and I don't want to leave. And I don't want to leave my car <laughs> at the valet. Right. I, I will. I will say there have been a few times where when I had my my Tesla, and I went <laughs> a couple times. There were like some pot, uh, you know, cannabis, whatever events. Like and sure. and, uh, and I. Ate a totally thing legal that I had in California. no idea. <laughs> yeah, totally <laughs> legal in California, guys. Don't freak out. And six other states, as far as I know. Um, but even my home state, Montana, it's legal. But uh, but you know, I got done and I was like, oh, I'm still pretty high, but I really want to go right. home. And it helped. I mean, I was like extra attentive. I was going the speed limit, everything I said. But I wanted to make extra sure that I was safe, and that that it's just like is a nice like comforting thing. And if it were a fully approved. You know, technology that you could use. I mean, man, think about how many lives it would save, how totally. much stress it would lower. Totally. So I, but I like your idea. I like both. I like being able to drive or the, not drive. That's the trick. Yeah. That's that. Be, I think. When it, I don't know. I don't know if that, that's what the future is going to be. But boy, I hope so. I don't know. I don't know. I'm. 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 I'm excited. I, well, here's the thing. Te- Tesla, you know, has done what they've done, and I'm glad that the remounts is faster because I'm right. tired of Tesla getting all the things like, yeah, you got sick engineers, you got your carbon wrapped, you know, rotor wires, wires, whatever, you get that extra energy density, and I get it, you guys are genius and all that stuff, but it's not a car built for people that love cars, and they're they're going back to try to make it a car that that, be- and everyone's impressed, all the drag time ca- guys yes. or whatever, they're like, oh my god, this car, it's everyone's, quick. but it's at quick. the same time, it's kind of like it's no fun, it's like it is. It's it's a missile, 
and it's great and it's you know we'll see how it does on the Nordschleife but but uh, again when they come back at it but uh, I'm excited for Porsche to develop their next weapon I'm I'm excited for Rimats Bugatti Rimats to come out yeah, with their next gonna weapon yeah that's going to be interesting it's, and that's going to be you know just so you, you know that's going to be hybrid right they're going to so for a sure, Bugatti owner like <laughs> you know an EV is like they don't care uh, but 16 cylinder where suddenly you go from 1500 to 2500 horsepower when you have two EV motors on the front wheels yes that's pretty exciting oh. Yeah, I right? think it's going to be – I think that's going to be good. And Porsche to me is the great – I think it's the greatest performance car company. Obviously, I'm, I love all of them. But what I love about Porsche is that it's the perfect intersection of, of – like you, you spend 250 grand on a tur- Turbo S. Mm-hmm. Uh, technically, right conditions, 2.2, easy launch control, all that stuff. You got that 205 uh, top speed. Handling dynamics, amazing, great. It's not a GT3. It's not a track. It's not a. It's not a track monster. But you can take it on a track, and it does. Pr- it's it does pretty close. Very well, especially pretty, if you upgrade the tires. It does very well. It's, it's very, pretty, very it's well. pretty yeah. close, you know. Yeah. But then, like, what's the next car that gets those performance numbers? You're looking at McLaren or something. So you're at 600. So and it's a bargain. Like, and you have. I mean, not quite that super usable, but you actually, it's a four-seater. Like, that's the yeah. thing that, that, thing that sure. blows yeah. people. Like, if you need to pick up a couple at the airport and their luggage, yeah. you can you, you, you can could do, do it. You could do it in a 911. That's, that's yeah, the difference. I know. That is the difference. Everyday supercar. Yeah, so. I know. I love it. I love Yeah, so anyways, but something to consider. I, that's the thing I discovered about Porsche. I was like, oh, I get it, guys. It's hard to beat a rear-engine car for packaging. However, it's, it, the only way to beat it is with an EV. So, I know. Right? No engine is really good for packaging. Oh, my yeah. God. I really can't. I mean, I want to experience a Rimats. <laughs> I really want to. Really? Just so you're, you're hyped on that. You're really... uh, I, I just think, well, one, what I love about it, the, the dude's from Croatia. Yeah, he's from Tes- Where Tesla is from. So it's like the real Tesla. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like got, he's got the Tesla Nikola energy. Tesla. Yeah, he's got the like Nikola. I, I, well, I, isn't he? I, I hate to do this. Uh, I think the Tesla's from the Czech Republic. Oh, is he? I, I, I thought he was positive. Croatian. Okay. Almost positive. But maybe, was, maybe not. That, maybe but, not. you know, it's close. It's Sorry. close. It's Balkany. <laughs> Balkany? Eastern European? I don't know. There you go. Um, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not a geography Bohemia. guy. Bohemia. Yes. Yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. kill me in the comments. But, yeah. um, uh, but like, but what I like about it is that, yeah, he's 33. He's a, he's a genius. You know, he's... Got he's got the Bugatti brand that he's gonna you know mess with. Porsche's got forty one percent stake in, in yeah, the company. 45%. As well. it's 45. Good, it's, it's, no, yeah, forty five. It's it's sorry to keep correcting you, but no, no, yeah, please, yeah, no, please it's, do it's, correct it's, me. It's, it's crazy that like Porsche's investing this much into this company, so the technology must be like much better than like my understanding of it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just like the idea of other companies kind of making a dent in what Tesla because what Tesla is Tesla is the the point of the sphere, right? It like punctured into it created a real reality with with EVs like actually being desirable, uh, efficient, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. fun, Ground all that stuff. So, uh, so I give it my hats totally off to 100%. Tesla, and I, I think that they, they killed it. But what I'm excited about is the competition to catch up and figure out super, super cheap electric car. And, you know, and I'm not totally sold on the, the, the Chinese cars yet, um, but uh, something will come from there as well. But, you know, whatever. Everyone's kind of making their moves, and I just like that there's this excitement about, like, well, what are we going to do? Or, like, what's the car that's being developed in California that's uh, Singer, running on hydrogen? The, zing, the, z- oh, the hydrogen? hyper car. Uh, the Zinger, the C- well, No, Zinger. no, there's a Zinger. It's a 3D printed car. But yeah. the, the, I, I no, there's a hydrogen. Oh. It looks yeah, yeah. crazy. I don't know. I'll, I'll yeah. get the I'll get the name of it. But I know that. Oh, here. I'll get the name of it because I want to drive that thing because it's fast as hell, crazy, a thousand miles of range. Yeah, on hydrogen. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the nice thing about hydrogen is you just install a bigger tank. Except that <laughs> hydrogen currently not really readily available. That's the other thing. Supply yeah. chain is, is like, where do so. you get it? You but know? but Toyota seems to be really down. I mean, they're investing a lot in hydrogen. Technology. Well, for yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh oh, you guys know <laughs> something. It, it could be a little bit of uh, they don't have any EVs, so they 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 do. Have, oh, because yeah. they're trying to catch up. Well, it's also in California, like cafe is pretty tough, so oh. you have to have like California carbon. The Hyperion XP1. I don't know this car. Mm. Good yeah. name. I like That's, Hyperion. Uh, Except that Hyperion is also the waste treatment plant. Yeah. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a this, great street. It's this thing. It's a great street. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm now. Yeah, I'm. I've, I, I mean, we'll that. see if they actually make it. But I, I, th- I sort of got like hydrogen car fatigue when the, every week yeah, there was I a know. new hydrogen car, and then they all kind of. I know. It's it's just not. It's it's like when I hear hydrogen, I'm I'm quasi excited. I'm like you seem much excited. more excited about hydrogen than most people I've ever met. Well, you I seem. Say. Here's the thing, and that we can we can we can wrap on this because yeah. I'm very. Uh, this has been awesome. I get the sense that you are very excited about the future of of automotive, the future of mobility, the future yeah. of the car, as Johnny mm-hmm. likes to say. The car. Are, yeah. Is it fair to say you're more like you've been, you've been a car guy for a while? You've driven some very cool cars. Are you 
Is this the most excited? Are you really like I the future? Like bring it on! Like you mentioned, right. yeah. Is this wh- wh- where are we at in your in your head in your headspace? I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited. I think that there's some really amazing technologies on the way um, that people are actually implementing into actual production vehicles. And I, again, I think Tesla has really pushed that envelope. It's caused people to retool their production flow through and and like how how you can like iterate something and then make it. So I'm really excited. I think, um, you know, I have friends that are like whatever about cars, uh, but when it, when they sit in a, a when they take a ride with me and I'm telling them about like what I'm experiencing and what I like about it, they start to get interested in it. And then I've had some friends, you know, say, like, "Hey, where can I go driving? Like on a track or something?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, you can go, you can go to Pecla, you can go to there's some other spaces or whatever." Um, I think. I think mobility is amazing, and I think that the, the intersection of robotics, essentially, uh, yeah, essentially robotics, artificial intelligence, and whatever machine choose a, an e-bike or um, or like um, what am I thinking of the uh, what's the bird looking teardrop shape uh, EV that's coming out. Um, Looking. Aptera. Oh, ap- oh, right. yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or something like you know, something like yeah. Aptera. I could yeah, see, yeah, I could yeah. see my millennial friends like really digging it because it's right. it's it's weird looking, but it's right. hyper efficient. Um, whatever, I, right. you know, whatever. There's like there's now like there's tiers for everybody to get involved with, and I think mobility, whether it's even like something that helps people walk, you know, like that weird Honda thing where it was like a saddle with two yeah, robotic yeah, legs yeah, 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 yeah. that you like put your feet in and it helps like your grandma walk sure. up and down stairs. Sure. Uh, I, I just love that whole world of mobility, EV tolls. Um, you know, I would love to do that hydrogen power, or not hydrogen power, but um, electric power, uh, what they called uh, Alice, Aviation Alice, I think, is uh, from, oh, yeah, yeah. from uh, Israel, that uh, turboprop. Yeah, yeah, flying yeah. cars, flying drones. Yeah, the, yeah, the, fr- the drone, yeah, the personal drones. drones. Yeah, yeah. And telepresence, all of that stuff. I think, like, there is an exciting future. I don't know if it's the Jetsons. You know, it depends on if we can keep our <laughs> together as a species. But if, if we can, and the economies of scale, the one part of capitalism that does work, which enables us to kind of actualize dreams, you know, hopefully – I don't know. I think that there's a chance that it could be a pretty exciting future. Um, I, I just I have to believe that because I've been excited about it since I was a kid. I remember looking at Car and Driver. Excuse me for That's growing right. up. What's another, that? Um, um, it's a I looked magazine. at it too. I looked it's at about it too. cars yeah, yeah. and put it on paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motor Trend's about the trends of motors, <laughs> right. and Car and Driver's about cars and drivers. Okay. Um, no, um, but as a kid, like I remember getting that. Um, there was the idea of the skateboard platform with a fuel cell. Right. As the skateboard and and the motors and I was like, whoa, that would be crazy. That was like 1986, maybe. Right. Yeah, GM showed one of those. Like, it, it might have been like, like 91, but yes. The, yeah, the it was like I just remember being a, yeah. on my like my mm-hmm. friend's bed, like looking yeah. at this, like oh my god, and 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 then to think like oh I owned a Tesla. I was like that's what that's it is. I am driving is. that. Yeah. Right. It is yeah, a field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that and that was like what 20, 30, or 30 years. I don't know, terrible time, whatever yeah. that was. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a long period of time for that to like actualize and now someone's like well i've got an idea for a thing and then like five years later they've got a pro- working prototype yeah or two years later I mean, oh yeah that's, that's, that's the true. crazy part is with you know digital everything like you know just we should wrap up but with the, the back to the hummer for a second yeah that was two years two sure. years from like we should do this to we're driving them by the way i'm really happy with 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 the hummer only in that it serves that like oh i need a huge giant vehicle segment right um and then I will say real quickly, the R1T, I think it's one of the most beautiful trucks. I'm not a big truck guy, but even though I'm from Montana. Yeah. Well, I think the solution is we're going to have you back because you've been an incredible Please. guest. And yes. uh, Reggie, Mr. Watts, um, this has been so much fun. And thank you so much for appearing on The Inevitable. Yes. And, oh, thank uh, you. We'll see you next time. Yay. And happy first episode. Thank you. <laughs> 